All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another fun mod, this time in the form of Transkeptunian, a planet pack of outer dwarf planets, which this current version that we're looking at is being made and using the Copernicus planet system. Uh, now, this particular planet pack is being made by Gravitasi and has been around quite a while with uh, Planet Factory CE, which is one of the two different mods you can use to add planets into the game. Uh, and uh, this version, uh, this mod, as I said, has been around with Planet Factory CE and was just recently ported over to Copernicus, uh, which is why I'm wanting to look at it today. I don't know why, but I've always kind of preferred Copernicus over Planet Factory CE, really for no good reason. I just do for some strange unknown variety of reasons but yes let's head on in over here to the tracking station and take a look at the four new dwarf planets and five moons that this adds into the game Ooh, we got a lot of asteroids there uh but yes if we zoom all the way out we can see we have four lovely new dwarf planets that oh dear god are far far away from our central system here uh, which see here is Jewel, a planet many people have issues getting to because of how far out it is and let alone Elo. And then you have Flo, all this way out here. Uh, but yes, the planets that this adds in are Flo, which is the farthest out, uh, Puto, which actually I think is supposed to be the closest, but oh, kind of the closest, but kind of not. So we have Flo, Puto, then Orma, and Arain, and Puto has two moons, and the other three dwarf planets only have one singular moon. But if we go and take a look at Puto over here, start with that, and zoom all the way in. Oh god, so much scrolling. And here is the lovely new dwarf planet of Puto. Let's center on that. And right now, for the time being, there isn't custom info here, uh, but it does show up in the uh, science archives if you are doing career mode, so it does properly show up in there. But for right now, it doesn't have uh, unique info, nor do these planets have any unique biomes. That is still a to-do thing, uh, but... We do, of course, have all the planetary information, a lovely radius of 122 kilom er, kilometers, a uh, very big area, mass, blah, 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 if you are interested in all of those things. Very cool looking planet, very cratery, very bumpy, nice and yellow and brown, I like it. And then we have the two moons for this planet, uh, the first one being Dar, which uh, similarly does not have a info in it as with all of the rest of the things added in and it has just a really cool little moon for this dwarf planet i love the giant crater right here and it's sort of odd almost oniony shape i like it i like it a lot and then the other moon for puto is a rays which is an interesting little thing very very mountainous, technically, I guess you could call it that, with all the various ridges. A lot more colors than Puto, but it shares a very similar color palette. Uh, yeah, very cool, very cool indeed. I like the couple of uh, craters that it has in it that seem to have some geologic activity of, uh, you know, messing around with all the creeks or crags and peaks, etc. But yes, that is a Puto and its moons. So if we zoom all the way back out, oh dear God, my scroll wheel is going to break and head on over to Orma and then zoom all the way in. Oh God, I hate this part in the tracking station. Ah, here we go. Center on the dwarf planet. This one, a lot more yellow, but a kind of a similar color palette to Puto, except we've got a bit more green in this one. Very cool. I do love the coloring of this planet. It's, it's uh, it just, it intrigues me. The color choices are very cool. I like it. A good topography on the place. Very nice. And of course, Orma has its one moon of foe. And if we zoom into that, a beautiful, very, very smooth red rock orbiting this a tiny little dwarf planet. Very, very interesting indeed. I love the shape and just how smooth it is compared to these dwarf planets that uh, are in this pack. Because it's just... 
it's unusually smooth. It, it intrigues me because of that. So if we scroll back out and head on over to the next dwarf planet we have on here, which is a rain, and then zoom all the way in. Actually, if we click that, nope, still got to click, still got to scroll all the way in. Ah, there we go. Focus on the planet. This one a bit more reddish brown, and uh, with quite a few very cool crater impacts that you can you know see the radiating kind of from the, the radiating uh, I don't know exactly what those are called but from the epicenter of where the comet or asteroid or whatever hit the planet very cool indeed I love it almost looks like snowy peaks but probably just the geology of this lovely little dwarf planet and then it has a rain it's one moon of new there we are, and a beautifully purple and similarly smooth asteroid or rock or whatever you want to call this thing orbiting this little dwarf planet. It's it's beautiful. I really like this thing. It's not quite as smooth as uh, the moon orbiting around Orma, yeah, because it, mainly because it just has l more sort of peaks to it. It's it's a bit more bumpy, but still a beautiful purple color. Who wouldn't enjoy that thing? And then last but certainly not least, if once again we scroll all the way the crap out and go to the farthest out planet in this pack. I mean, dear God, look at how far away that is from the sun. We have Flow, which if we once again zoom all the way the balls in and head to Flow, it is uh, almost like a ball of ice out there. It is very cold, very cool, which you'd expect it to be quite cold considering look at how tiny the sun is from here. Look at it. It's a little dot in the distance, but beautiful blues and whites, a very, very cold dreadful little dwarf planet with its equally as cold moon of S, which is not quite as smooth as the last two moons we've looked at, but interestingly, I actually hadn't noticed this before, we've got it smooth on one side and very craggy on the other. Huh, that's intriguing. I, I didn't notice that before. When I was coming in here when testing, I only saw the smooth side. I didn't actually scroll around to the back. Look at that. That is cool. Got that nice little equator there almost, splitting the two halves of smooth and craggy. I like it. And could add an extra bit of difficulty for your exploration to get out out here. The smooth side would definitely be easier to land on, but the craggy side could be more interesting. And, you know, more intriguing, get some good science in there. And look at that texturing, very cool. Almost looks like coral. I like it, but let's go take a closer look at these uh, different planets. I've got a probe around the different dwarf planets. We aren't going to look close up at the moons, but we can at least get a good shot of the planets themselves with these little probes. Oh, we're going to have to speed up time so we get in the sunlight here. And we almost there we go and look at that beautiful little dwarf planet of Puto. I, I really do love the yellowy terrain that we have on this. It's, I don't know why, but it intrigues me and I love it. Oh, and we have that moon in the background over there. A very, very cool little dwarf planet. Now we're orbiting at about, for all three of these dwarf planets, we're at about 100,000 meters uh, put there thanks to a uh, hyper edit. Gotta love hyper edit. And uh, yeah, beautiful beautiful orbit around these planets. I really do love the color and textures of all of them. They are very, very unique. And some of the coolest planet packs that I've seen in a while. Now, as I said, this one has, in fact, actually been around for quite some time. Uh, I just haven't really looked at it because it was in with Planet Factory CE. And these days, I like Copernicus. But let's head back to the tracking station and go and take a look at the other probes. Let's see here, click, and then over to Orma. Let's check out that one from a more close-up angle. Oh, we're in the dark again. Oh, boy. Okay, speed up time. Gotta love that Kerbals seemingly have the power of a Time Lord. <laughs> and uh, there we are, the just beautiful, very, very spiky terrain of this planet here. It's... And I, I love the greens. The peaks are a bit, I think, a bit much for me, a bit too exaggerated, but still the colors of this planet. I, 
I just love. They are they are gorgeous. Can we see one of the moons in our immediate area? Up, oh, yes, we can. There is that smooth red ball over there. But yes, a very very cool planet indeed here in. Uh, oh God, which one was this again? Orma. Ah uh, yes, Orma. This is indeed Orma. Had to go look at my other monitor to confirm, but a beautiful, beautiful planet. Have to say, I do enjoy it. Let's go back to the space center, and then of course the tracking station, and look at uh, oh god, which one's next? A rain, I believe. Yes, there we go. Oh god, we're not going to be in the sun for this one either. Quick, time acceleration, and. There we go, ha! Ah, the beautiful, beautiful red color of this planet. It's, it's just, it's gorgeous. Look at this thing, it's, it's beautiful. And so very far away from the sun. <laughs> oh my god. It's just, these, these planets are just so, so freaking far out there. But I, I love how they look. The terrain on this one a bit smoother uh, than the pre, well actually a lot smoother than the last one. And I love the sort of impact marks that you get on the uh, texturing for the planet. Very, very cool indeed. You gotta love this array of just a beautiful red color. It's, it's, it's gorgeous. I love it. I love it to death. So let's head back to the Space Center and take a look at the last of the dwarf planets from a closer up view with our little probe. And uh, the last one, of course, being a Flo, the beautiful ice ball out there. Now we are actually in the sun for this one. Perfect. There we go. And we have the blue moon over there. Very cool. I love how close they are to one another. I mean, that's that's not that great of a distance considering. Uh, but yes, we're even farther away from the sun. Just it's it's so tiny. How well are my photovolvic panels working? Not that I mean, it's not too bad. 0.91 sun exposure. It's plenty to keep the batteries on this little thing going. But yeah, I, I love this blue ice planet here. It's it's gorgeous. You, you gotta love this thing. And you know, with the nice little blue moon in the background, it's it's just great. Uh, I, I'm really enjoying this pack because the four dwarf planets are all very well made, very beautifully textured. I love the terrain on all of them. And if you are into a challenge in this game, dear God, these things are hard to get to with how far out they are in the solar system. So uh, I would definitely say to go and check this out. Now, if you haven't already, of course, I am a little late to the game considering I've waited until it has been ported over to Copernicus. But nonetheless, it is there for you now, and you can download either version, Planet Factory or Copernicus still. They both work with version 0.9, so you should be good. Uh, if you are using either, though, one thing about these, he kind of uses a custom version of both, so it may not be compatible with other planets. So if... If you don't have any new planets into the game, eh, you'll be fine. But if you have other planets already in your save file, eh, you may wanna you, know, you may wanna back up your saves. I'm, that's all I'm saying. Just make sure always back up your saves before you play around with a mod. And yes, there are still a lot of things to do, such as the uh, custom descriptions of the bodies. Uh, he wants to add in custom scientific definitions. The biomes haven't been added. Uh, so there is still a lot to be done. But so far, I'm loving these planets. They are just gorgeous. So I hope you do go and check them out. And of course, that you have enjoyed this episode here today. And that you come back for the next when we'll be looking at yet another fun mod, hopefully. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always... Have a good one.